Hello everyone and welcome back to Amp Software's YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through the latest release of Amp 5. In today's video I'll be taking you through a quick summary of what to expect in the latest version of Amp 5. Amp 5 began with the idea of creating a piece of software that could handle all the needs required for a forensic video analyst to deal with video evidence and image evidence. Over the years, we've continued to build on the capabilities of Amp 5, making sure that it can meet the needs for all the different stages of an investigation. Last year, we introduced a feature called the Copy and Verify. This was a big step forward to improving the capabilities of the acquisition stage of handling video evidence. In this update, we've improved how Copy and Verify integrates itself with AMP5. Now, after you've done the Copy and Verify process, you'll be able to instantly load the files that you've copied into AMP5 in either a single folder or into separate chains. So now I'm going to jump into 5 and show you how that works. So if we go to the utilities menu and go to that copy and verify, you'll see that we get our copy and verify uh, dialog up. So I have my copy and verify set up from my input, which would normally be some sort of external medium like a USB drive. And then the destination would be onto your system where you're gonna start processing that evidence. And then you run the copy and verify and we get the information that those files have been copied forensically and that we've got the hashes to prove that. So with this update, this is where the new process starts. Now you have the capability of selecting the files that you've copied and verified and then you can right click and load the selected files into a folder. You'll then be greeted with a new folder and in that folder you will have those files along with the hash code for each file. And you can see that the log file of the copy and verify is used to match these files to that log as well. Okay, so we just finished looking at an update that helps us in that acquisition stage. Now I want to move on to project management. Now an update that we're bringing that's gonna help you manage your projects a little bit better. And this update is the capability of doing nested folders within the history. So previously in 5, you were limited to only having sort of single folders. But now you can see that we can have folders within folders. So this will allow you to manage your projects much better when you've got lots of media coming from lots of different sources. So here I've just shown you a mock-up of uh, Source 1. And in there, I've got two folders, one including videos and one including images. So if we go to our source 2, I've left this one unsorted just so that I can quickly show you how to do this. So all we need to do is create a new folder. So here I just called one videos and another one images. And then I can simply just drag this into my source 2 folder like so. And then I can just then move my chains within those folders. So I have the video here video here, an image, and finally a video. Just remember when you're moving things around in the history that you want to, if you're just moving it, you're gonna select the chain. If I want to copy any of these, I'm gonna right click and copy, or if I just want to copy the video loader without any of the other chains, then I can just select the uh, video loader itself. This is just gonna be a nice, easy way for us to manage our projects a little bit better in the future. And 
while we're on the topic of folders, we're also now able to copy folders. So if I want to copy the whole folder and its contents, I can just simply right click and copy and it's going to make a complete copy of that folder. The next new feature I would like to introduce to you is a new filter and this is the add log file filter. With the add log file filter, you'll be able to incorporate all the different types of logs that are created in the process of working through evidence in five and bring them back into five to display them either in the report themselves or to at least link to the logs within your report just to tidy up all the audit trial of what's going on. So if we go back to copy and verify for a moment, when we copy and verify from our medium to our hard drive, we create a log in that process that contains the hash values of each of those files. And we can now load that log file into five. So what you would need to do is go to one of the chains that you've loaded through copy and verify. And then under the verify, you can see that there's this new filter now that odd add log file. So I'm going to select that and you can see I've got my copy and verify log just here. So I'm going to select this and you'll see that now my filter settings are populated and I have a couple of options. So I can either just include the log name and the hash value or I can include the full log. Now, when we're doing copy and verify and we've got the hash codes there, I'd be inclined to include the full log. But if I'm going to be including a log from, let's say, the conversion process, where we have lots and lots of lines of data, it might be too big to add all of that information into the forensic report. So you may just want to reference that conversion log by including the log name and the hash value of that log. For this demonstration, I will use the full log and just click apply to make sure that's uh, applied. And now when I go and generate my report, and I'll zoom in a little bit. If we go to that add log file, you'll see that it's now given us the contents of that log. So you can see here we've just got a key of what each number represents. And then we've got the information about each file. So we've got um, where the input location was, where the output location was, the fact that it's been hashed at both input and output, and that it was copied and that the hash codes were compared. So all that information is now within my forensic report produced by five. And as I said, you can add all different manner of logs into this, even logs that aren't created in five. If you're creating a larger project and five is the main part of this project that you're doing, maybe you just want to include some logs from elsewhere. Um, so you've got that capability as well. The next part of the update that I would like to mention to you quickly and briefly is a update that we've done within the advanced file information. So within the advanced file info, we have all come accustomed now to these different tools that we can use to analyze our evidence. One of the main ones being Media Info. Media Info over the years has updated itself and we have now updated the Media Info within AMP5. So from this update onwards, you will be getting the most recent version of Media Info at the time of the creation of this main five official. Okay, the next part of the update that I think is definitely worth mentioning is regarding video with audio. 
We discovered that some video coming from different surveillance cameras can have audio streams within the video that are longer in duration than the actual video. What this meant is that when these videos are put into a player, because the audio is slightly longer than the video and the video is taking priority, you're actually losing a few seconds, maybe a few frames of audio at times. So we've incorporated a way around this in which we're going to introduce black frames when the audio duration is longer than the video. So if I bring a video with an audio stream into five, you'll see now that we get this new box open and it's telling us that this file contains an audio track that exceeds the duration of the video and asking us if we want to add those black frames to avoid audio loss. You can see some details here as well um, that we can control whether we want this um, option within our program options. So here I'm going to select yes and you'll see in this file particularly it right at the end there's two frames two black frames that have been added to the video just to compensate for that extra length uh, in duration that the audio has okay so we've come to the end of the update video this is definitely not the end of all the updates that are in this release so make sure you do go check out the blog post for this update because there's a lot of things that are coming out with this release that I haven't had time to mention within the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and until next time, take care.